everybody. Welcome back to My View on the View, a commentary podcast all about ABC's The View. Thank you for joining me for another drive time OG viewer chat. Um, just want to chat with you guys about this week's shows because today is the last day of live shows because tomorrow, which is Friday, July 1st, they are going to be showing a rerun. So welcome to everybody. So let's get started. I really hope that all of you have been watching the shows this week because they have been fantastic. Haven't they, y'all? Haven't they, y'all? I mean, Monday was great. Tuesday was great. Wednesday, yesterday was great. Today is going to be great. Um, I don't know, guys. It seems to me the women are bonding on a whole different level. Have y'all picked that up? Have y'all noticed that? Maybe I'm reading into things. <laughs> Maybe they haven't bonded on a whole nother level. Um, but I will tell y'all, for me, I have not laughed this much consistently in a week of shows than I have this week. I mean, it's been fantastic. Um, Joy pretending to be the bartender and marrying those two couples, you know, quote unquote, marrying them, right? Um, The scene where they open with them doing yoga. You know, we already talked about Sarah and Sonny's competition adventure, you know. Uh, Yesterday, that was, of course, the Marcus Samuelson, Marcus, because I only knew his first name, Marcus, um, that I was thinking of. Marcus had a smile from ear to ear. Sherry was great. Wasn't Sherry great? Y'all, those of you who saw Sherry's, <laughs> I I felt like Sunny when she, y- y'all know Sherry has talked about her sex toys for years when she's been, when she was on The View as a panelist, she talked about her sex toys. Okay. But I was like, Sunny, y'all, I had my hand, my face in my hands. I was like, oh my gosh. And then Anna finally was like, this is taking a terrible turn. So it was just very funny. Sherry was a fantastic guest. Did you guys see how Sherry was so happy? She even lifted her hands in the air and said, I'm so happy. You know, can you imagine? And all of us have had this experience where something you've always wanted finally happens, right? It finally happens. And it happens in the most unexpected way. One of my, one of my favorite things is when God surprises me. That's, that's the way I say it. You know, something that I wasn't expecting, something I wanted um, in my heart, but I never verbalized it to anybody. I never even verbalized it to him necessarily. But then I go somewhere or something and then it happens. I'm like, oh, it just reminds me God sees my heart. You know, he sees our heart. So, um, and I had a surprise like that the other day. Um, there was someone that I had been wanting to meet for since 2018, since 2018. And this person and I, uh, had some dealings in the same area, you know, and same location, but I never saw them. I never really ever saw them. And I saw them. I came in at the exact same time, the building that they were coming in. And I was like, oh my gosh, you know? So that was something that I always wanted. So um, all of us have had that experience, as I was saying, where we finally get something we've always wanted. And of course, we are glowing. We're beaming. We're smiling. Those are the types of moments that make life rich. Right, y'all? So Sherry looked, you know what? I think Sherry's going to do a fantastic job, job. Did you guys know this? I was looking at some of the information that's come out about Sherry's show. Remember, they'd given her a premiere date. She talked about it on the sh- on the View, uh, September 12th. But this is what I re- read. Did any of you guys see this report where her show, Sherry, has been picked up by 97% of the U.S. market, TV market? Isn't that fantastic? I was like, oh my gosh, she's already starting off on a fantastic uh, foundation with all of these television markets, these affiliates picking up her show. So I think it's just wonderful. And I really hope, I really hope that she does a fantastic job and that her show um, takes, you know, a lot of people take to her show. So anyway, so yeah, so it's just been fantastic, fantastic. Now, see, I thought yesterday, you know, they had Samu on there. I... I did not rec- know his name, but when I saw him yesterday, I was like, oh, he's, I know this guy. He's been there several times. I thought this was an author, someone who was just strictly an author who, who wrote the book, We Were Dreamers. <laughs> and then when I saw him, I was like, oh, the actor turned, you know, actor, author. It's not that I think y'all that actors can't be authors or that they're less of an author because, you know, it's not that. It's just that for me, I really want them to have people who that's all they do. Like they are, you know, I was about to say bona fide. <laughs> Maybe I have a, 
underlying <laughs> bias there that's coming out. But I, I yeah, I'm going to go ahead and say it, you know, bona fide authors, you know. So anyway, but I, I don't, t- guys, I'm telling you, I've laughed so much this week that it, it, it just seems to me the women are having so much fun. Now, you know what I have wanted to see? I had hoped that Joy would loosen up a little bit in her dress. Remember for the very first time, was it last week? She she wore an all red suit, <laughs> pants suit. Her pants were, were red rather than the jacket was too. She always wore black. And a lot of us know for years, Joy wore the same type of shoes. It was like, it was actually the same pair of shoes. It was like, what's going on? You know, but you know how it is when you get older, even you don't have to be older. You just want to be comfortable. And if you find a pair of shoes that's comfortable or whatever, you're like, this is just what I'm doing. Like Sunny loves those, um, y'all know those slide ins that she wears all the time. She has two pairs that she loves, a yellow and the black. All right. Well, I had hoped that Joy would kind of let her hair down a little bit and at least wear a sundress or something. You know, look at how Sunny and Sarah are dressing. You know, they're, you know, shoulders out, arms out. You know, you're in a hot place. You're in a sunny place. You just want, you know, to soak it all in. But Joy is still coming on with her blazer jackets (laughs) like she's going to the office. And I'm like, come on, Joy, you done told us about your sex life. You done told us about Steve's peen. Okay, so... (laughs) Why not just let your arms go free, right? So I've loved it. Now, let me ask you guys something. Um, and is it just me or do you feel this way too? For some reason, and I, I, I thought, you know, about the various reasons why it could be, but I don't feel like they've been focusing a lot on these January 6th hearings, even when they were in studio, you know, like I expected yesterday's show. I know we had guests there. So of course, Focus on Marcus, focus on Samu. But I thought they would spend a whole lot of time talking about Cassidy Hutchinson's testimony, but they only spent like a smidge of time on it. And I was like, what? You know, even like I said, when they were in the studio, when they would return, let's say the hearing was the day before and they would return the next day, they spent very little time talking about the hearing. And, you know, and I know part of it's because of, you know, Roe v. Wade being overturned. And so that's been the predominant conversation everywhere, right? Because that has truly taken folks by complete and utter surprise. And so a lot of folks have been focusing on that. But I don't know. I just thought I I just really expected to, for them to spend a whole lot of time, time yesterday talking about, you know, um, what happened. But I don't know. Uh, Let me know if you felt that way too, or maybe you feel like they're giving ample time. And I know some of you probably think, you know, well, there is so much to talk about. There's so much that's going on. Um, It's difficult to focus on all of it. Like they've not touched on the war in Ukraine um, for a while or maybe for a few weeks. Um, I'm not sure. Anyway, so we'll we'll just have to, to see. Like, you know, they didn't talk about the NATO summit that's happening. What is it in Spain? Something like that. You know, um, I don't know. I don't know. We'll see. But anyway, guys, I gotta drink my little water here. So I I don't know, guys, I've just been loving it. Um, But now don't forget the women are going to be going soon on their break and then they're going to come back and they're going to finish out season 25 for us. Right. And uh, season 25 for all of you who are like absolutely brand new to ABC's The View, um, it's going to end. The season always ends in August. It's either the first week of August or the second week. I can't remember. But that's kind of how it's going to go. All right. So, yeah. Now, as I end, I want to just touch on something really, really quickly, because, you know, in talking about, you know, Sunny has made it clear that, you know, in her view. There are at least three charges that right now we haven't heard everything that the committee is going to present to us. But she said there are at least three charges um, that the Justice Department could bring against Trump. Right. Right. But there's been a lot of talk on the show online about whether he's going to be charged at all. You know, a lot of people are just saying, you know, if he if he's not brought on charges and convicted. OK, um, what will this say? Uh, you know, what will this do for other future? What, what kind of precedent will this set for future politicians who and not just presidents, but politicians who feel like they're going to get in there and do whatever. And just, I mean, some of the stuff that was going on, we like one of you guys said, you think you've heard it all. And then this other crate, you're like, what kind of mess was going on? You know, they should have invoked the 25th amendment period. I mean, way before January 6th, but at any rate, um, I want to remind all of us of something. Notice I said all of us, because I'm having to remind myself of this too, because all of us who've been watching these hearings, even prior to the hearings, 
I think the majority of Americans are pretty clear that this man needs to be brought to justice. Not just him, but all his cronies, okay? I know not everyone feels that way, but I'm saying the majority of Americans do. I think they put out a poll, was it 65%? Okay, but let me just say this. I want to remind you of what I'm reminding myself of. That justice always comes, but not always the way or in the way or in the timing that we expect. Now, I want to say something, and I'm not going to talk too much on it because I'm still observing it myself. You know, I always try to encourage you guys to be observers, not just of your own life, so that you can see what your life is saying to you, but also be observers of life, period. Most of you are, but you know, when I say these things, I'm talking mostly to my younger listeners, right? Don't be so busy with living that you don't observe everything that you can that's happening around you, because this is how you learn how life works, okay? So I've been observing that we have entered I can, I can specifically say the United States. I can't speak for the world itself. Maybe so, but I'm going to relegate my comments just to, the, to where I live in the U.S. We have entered into what I am calling the season or the era of justice. It's been happening since the turn of the century. It's been happening specifically the last three years. What do I mean? We've seen people in the same season of time that we're in who, quote unquote, got away with some of the most horrendous acts, all be brought to justice in the same period, era or season of time. That is speaking loud and clear to me that we have crossed over into a season of justice. Let's just give some names, recent names, R. Kelly, all the things he did to those boys, all the things he did to those girls decades ago, finally being brought to justice. Ghislaine Maxwell, you think about being a woman and doing some of the, the putrid things that this woman did leading other girls to slaughter, we could say, because their lives are so messed up because of all that crap and trash and and perversion finally being brought to justice. We could go through a whole list of names, couldn't we? Couldn't we? Couldn't we? Look at what's happening with Wendy Williams. We just touched on that the other day when we were talking about Sherry coming toward the show. Look at what's happening with her. See, we, we, what we know being observers of life is that justice always comes. But what we don't know is how or when. So I want to remind you guys. Remember, when it comes to our existence here on the earth as human beings, there are many different layers at work. There is what we could call the cause and effect justice, the accumulation of bad choices over time, where then everything comes crashing down on us, the accumulation of our bad choices. Okay. We could also say, call it karmic justice. We could also call it, we reap what we sow, right? There are many names for the same activity. Okay. So, There are so many layers. Also, we can't ever forget there's the layer of grace and mercy. And none of us know when the grace expires for us. Remember we were talking about Kyle Rittenhouse. Remember that? This was last year, I believe it was, or whenever it was. (laughs) Uh, We've talked about so many things here. And I was talking about the conscience and da-da-da-da-da. And I was saying, 
you know, for those of us who will live long enough, because he's 18. So see, some of us may not live another 30 years, 20 years, 15 years, five years. So we may not live long enough to see how it's all going to work out with him. But I said that because I always encourage all of us and I try to do it myself, be an observer of life. That way, as I said, and as I'm going to repeat again for my young folks, you accumulate, and so do I, enough information to understand how life works. See, life is not a mystery. It really isn't, okay? So I was saying, none of us know what's going to happen, you know, in terms of if he doesn't turn around, when he will then begin to suffer the consequences. None of us know that because there are so many layers at work. And again, the layer of grace and mercy. You know, I've taught on this before and I've not taught on it here and I'm not going to go too deep into it. And I don't have time to give examples and all of that. I'll just say this for now. None of us know when grace and mercy will be extended to us and how and how long. But what we do know as observers of life, I talked about this with the young people we were talking about. um, What was that? preacher couple that was in Atlanta. It was a young couple. Lindsay, Lindsay, somebody, I can't remember her and her husband. Anyway, who eventually was, you know, the IRS, I think got them right. But we talked about how when we refuse to change, see, I need you to hear me when we, not they, when we all refuse to change, There's going to come a period where the grace is pulled back and now we're going to suffer the consequences because there are a lot of people who can tell you I'm one of them and you're one of them too. various things that we've done in our life. Of course, nothing, you know, twisted and perverted and we're not talking about those type of things, you know, just little things that we've done or said, right, mistreated somebody in some way. We never suffer the consequences of that, that and we know we should have like we should have gotten in trouble, but we didn't. You want to know why? If you look at the, if you look at your life, it was probably because you met, you try, you repented in some way, you turned around in some way, even if it was just in your heart, you made a decision, okay, or you apologize or whatever, you know, or let's say it was a situation and the person had grace and mercy on you or me, right? So see, there are all these various layers that all of us need to remind ourselves are at work at all times with all of us. So that's why people say, oh, if it doesn't happen in two weeks, it's never going to happen. Okay, no, there are so many things at work. Okay, that's why we have to always stay hopeful and do our best to stay expectant because we never know when things are going to happen, whether it's something good or unfortunately, you know, something not so good. Now, of course, we wouldn't be hoping for that. You understand the balance of what I'm saying here. So. When it comes to Trump, we don't know when or how he'll get his justice. But what we do know is he is going to get it. Who knows? Justice could come at the hand of one of his supporters. And I won't explain that any further. See, we don't know. We don't know how. We don't know when. We don't know how these things will, will come. But what we all have to remember is that if he's not charged... We'll, we'll all be disappointed. I know I will. But I'm also reminding myself that there are multiple layers here. And then there's always the layer that we just don't understand and that we will not understand while we're in these bodies on the earth. We won't understand it until we cross over until whatever's after this. And the Bible, you know, tells me, you know, the Bible says we'll know even as we're known. So we'll understand it all truly by and by. That's not just a cliche. That is truly true. We will understand it all. When we go through our life review, we'll understand, oh, that's why that happened. You know, all the things you have on the I don't understand shelf in your life. You know, I have one of those shelves. You know, you know, it's, it's you know, I call it my, my, you know, spirit. I'm going to have to put that on the shelf, spiritual shelf. I don't, I don't know what that was all about. <laughs> and years later, I still don't know what that was all about, but I'll understand it by and by. I'll understand it all, you know? So as I end, I will just say, we hope that he will be charged. We can all hear these things, right? That have gone on. I'll tell you something. I don't think these other folks that we've been hearing about are going to be willing to be like Michael Cohen. You know, Michael Cohen went to jail behind Trump. You know, he stood almost to the very end supporting him, right? 
But I think of some of these other people, honey child, they're going to be like, okay, now wait a minute. <laughs> I ain't going to jail for you, right? That's not what we're going to do. So I'm going to go in here and tell everything. That means I'm telling on everybody. <laughs> I think a lot of these people were uh, Cassidy testifying really shook them up because they know she was there. And because her office was literally in the middle there, as they showed us on that diagram, she saw and heard stuff from everybody. So I think all these men are getting very nervous about what she has told the committee and what, what documents she may have, what proof she may have, you know, you know, so we'll just have to wait and see. Let's just observe how it all happens. And again, if he if he's not charged, if all these other people that conspired with him, Mark Meadows, Jim Jordan, all these people, if they're not Louis Gomer, all of them, if they're not, just keep watching. Because remember, there are multiple layers and justice comes in a number of ways, not just through the criminal justice system. I do want to remind you guys of two examples that I've given before, uh, specifically when we were talking about Kyle. OK, I want to remind you of how justice comes again. OK, in two separate examples. Now, let me just make this clear, because, you know, we always have people that, you know, try to read into what you're saying and they assume you're saying something you're not. And because they, you know, whatever's going on with them, they totally hear something you didn't say. So let me make this clear. In these two examples, I am not saying that this is what's going to happen to Trump. I'm just giving you these, these examples to say these are examples in other people's lives of how it all caught up with them in the end. And their justice came in a very different way than what was expected. Okay. That's the point. All right. Remember I shared with those of you who didn't know, maybe you don't live in the U S so you never heard of Bishop Eddie long. Remember I shared that story. I'm going to go a little bit deeper into it now. Um, when he was acute, well, first let me just say this, this is very important. If you didn't know who he was because you live out of the States or maybe you live in the United States, but, um, you know, you, you don't keep up with this and maybe you, you know, maybe you are, you know, white and you're in a church where, you know, anyone you listen to is white. You don't know anything that's going on in other churches. It could be a situation like that because this was a black guy who was, um, the leader of one of the largest churches in Georgia. Okay. So it's very important to remember that this guy was a very, he looked like a bodybuilder. He worked out all the time and he was known for wearing tight clothing to show off all his muscles. Yes, even when he was preaching. Okay, so he would that's you got to keep that in mind. That's how he looked. Okay, all right. So remember when, as I share with you, when all the allegations came out that he had been molesting boys for decades. Okay. He never denied it. Remember, I was telling you that for those who never heard the story, he never denied it. He never came in front of the public and said, I did not do that. I never molested anybody. These boys are lying on me. He never, he never explicitly denied anything, nor did he say I did it. But this is what he said. And I want you to listen to it. He said, I'm not the man they say I am. I'm just like David. I'm going to fight. I'm going to throw five smooth stones. Those of you know the biblical story of David, you know, that's how he took down Goliath. He put five stones in his uh, sling bag and only took one of them to take him out. Right. Because God was with them. Remember, David said, you come at me with swords and spears, but I come at you in the name of. Right. Remember that? All right. So he gave that biblical reference. Okay, but he never said, yes, I did it. He never said, no, I did not. I'm not the man they say I was. He refused to take any interviews. Although the, the boys did many interviews. One of them was with Don Lemon, um, Don Lemon. And that's when Don Lemon admitted to the world or he revealed rather to the world that he had been sexually molested as a, as a, as a little boy by, you know, a, a man and all of that. So during this time, remember, I was telling you that some friends and I, we were doing this kind of work. We were working with children who have been abused and, you know, adults who have been abused, blah, blah, blah. So we were having this conversation because a lot of people were saying, see, he, he denied it. He didn't do it. And they were talking about the, his quote unquote denial or his, his saying it. And it was when he said, I'm not the man I say I am. So we were pointing out to people because we were interviewing, we had been interviewing molesters, people had molested children. And these people are very manipulative. When I tell you these people, 
men and women, because it's not just men that do these things, women too. They are some of the most manipulative. Talking to them is like being in a maze. They, they're, they, the way they use words, they're so manipulative. Okay. So we were pointing out to people. He said, I'm not the man they say I am. That is not saying he didn't do it. That is not denying it. And people would be like, well, yes, it is. So we would have to point out, okay, you have to look at what did they say he was? Because he said, I'm not the man they say I am. They said he forced them to have these, to participate in these particular acts. And you know what I'm talking about with him. He said, they said he forced them. They also said he bought them fancy cars and took them on fancy trips out of the country. And, you know, he, you know, because he was so famous, he had access to all these entertainers and all this. He was buying them clothes. That's what they said he did in exchange for these particular acts. Now, he says, I'm not the man they say I am. What he could have meant was, I never forced them. They did those acts because they wanted to do them. I never bought them, you know, this and that. See, because they, they, so we were trying to point out to people, he never, folks who didn't do that, they would have said, they would have been very clear. Can you imagine being accused of some crash, some crap like that? You would be saying, I never molest, you would be so clear. It wouldn't, you wouldn't leave a doubt to anybody's mind. But when you say something very manipulative, like I'm not the man they say I am. See, you know, there's evidence that you did do this stuff, <laughs> Right. So we tried to point that out to people. You know, it was so hard for people to get that. It's like, you got to look at what they said. And he's saying he's not what they said. So he's probably just meaning I never forced them. Because again, these folks are some of the most manipulative people. I'm going to tell you, I think on the earth, they are some of the most manipulative people. They have a spirit of manipulation. I mean, it's, it's almost, I mean, it's sickening to deal with these types of people anyway. Okay. So they had a mediation because, you know, he didn't get arrested, right? And he paid each boy's boy millions of dollars from the church money, okay? And they settled out of court, okay, him paying the millions, and he had the record sealed because he didn't want, folks, the media to be able to see what was said in these depositions because it would have revealed you did do these things. You did it. That's why you had to pay him millions. Okay. He was still very muscular, all this. He went on and tried to act as if nothing had happened. He continued preaching at his church. He continued being invited places to preach. I mean, it was sickening to watch how many people, and this is people who knew he settled out of court. And we all know when you have to settle out of court with somebody and you wind up being, having to pay people millions of dollars, that means you did something wrong. But yet people kept going to his church. I mean, it was as if this, nothing had happened. Okay. And I guess You know, a lot of people were just, they just didn't want to believe that he did some crap like that. All right. Then, remember I told you, for those of you who didn't know, he then later wrote a book supposedly where he said he was going to tell the truth. So he goes on Steve Harvey's show. This is the first interview he's done. Now, mind you, he and Steve Harvey were at that time very close friends. Okay. So Steve was very easy with him. He didn't, he didn't want to believe he did it either. Right. So the man goes on Steve Harvey show and every question Steve asks him, he says, well, I can't, you know, legally, I can't talk about that. Then he kept referring to the book, but in the book, in the book. So he wanted folks to buy that book. Okay. When I came home and I saw that, I said, all right, it's over now. Because he's now crossed over to trying to make money off the perverted acts he's done off hurting children. It's, it's bad enough that you went on as if nothing happened and you didn't step down from your church. You didn't go somewhere and sit down. His wife was going to divorce him. Then she decided to stay. So she was a part of it too. Because see, when we know someone is doing something that's horrible, especially if it's hurting children and we don't open our mouths and say, stop it, or I'm leaving, or I'm going to go to police. When we don't try to take up for those who can't take up for themselves, we are just as guilty even if we didn't do the act. All right. So course, people read that book. I never did because I never could stand the guy. People read that book that he didn't tell nothing. I said, well, why would somebody think he was going to tell it? He was never going to admit he molested those boys. Never. Well, two months after his appearance on Steve Harvey, he disappeared from view. He wasn't at his church. Nobody knew what was going on. Rumors began to circulate that he was sick, that he was ill. But the people, his folks were coming out saying, no, he's not. You know, I, I can't remember what lie they told people. Then this video surfaced that he had done 
where he was somewhere working out with resistance bands. Remember the man I told you he looked like? He had emaciated down to almost nothing. That's within that short period of time. And then shortly after that, he died. He died. So see, justice, he never went to jail for what he did. He never went to jail. He never lost his church. You see, the way that I'm saying the typical ways that people expect for justice to be served to people like this or to anybody. He never lost his church. He never lost any money other than, you know, people were still coming. They were still donating money to him. I mean, there was even something so pathetic as they put him in some sort of chair and walked him down the aisle saying he was like a king or something. A lot of you remember that. I mean, I I mean, to me, that was just so, so, so blasphemous. But, you know, folks do what they're going to do. As I said, he was he didn't lose any speaking engagements. Um, I mean, it was just it was just almost fantastic. And I mean that in the bad way, fantastic, meaning in the bad way, fantastic can be used to see that these people didn't even I mean, some people walked away like Bernice King, you know, the late great Martin Luther King Jr.'s daughter. She was a minister on his staff. She when this all came out, she resigned. So there were some people who said, OK, uh, uh-uh, no, no, right here. Now, this is where we, we the buck stops. OK. OK, well, see, he didn't get the justice that that people thought, but he did. He did. Now, the next example I gave you, remember, was Wendy Williams. Look at what's happened to Wendy. Remember how in front of the world she treated Whitney Houston when Whitney was in the throes of her addiction? And when Whitney Houston had a hard time leaving Bobby Brown. Wouldn't you say something very similar as has played out with Wendy? So as I end, I want to remind us all again, justice does come. It does. When people don't turn around, when people don't own up fully to what they did, when people aren't remorseful, when people don't repent, when, when we, when we don't repent, when we don't change our hearts, And of course, most of us have never done anything horrific like the stuff I'm talking about. But I'm just talking about just the things we do do. Cheating on taxes. That's pretty prevalent, especially in the U.S. Um, What else could we say that's pretty prevalent? You know, well, we, you know, things here and there. You know, you know what I'm talking about. If we don't change, if we don't stop, if we don't make things right, if we don't turn around, There's going to come a period where it's going to all, the accumulation of what we've done is going to all come back on us. And we're going to have to eventually pay for what we've done. You know, I was talking with someone some months ago, and this person is a very manipulative person. Um, I eventually just had to say, okay, you know, I'm so sorry. You know, I just can't continue to um, associate with you in any way, shape or form. Right. Um, because we can be graceful to people. We can try to understand people's plights or whatever. But all of us have to have boundaries where we say, OK, now I will not be associated with someone who, you know, fill in the blank. OK, all of us have to have that. Right. All of us have to protect our own lives. Right. And our families, especially. Right. OK, so I was talking with this person. This is actually our last conversation some time ago. And they had heard me teaching here on the podcast about the conscience. So this person called me and I could tell this person wanted to confess to something they had done. Right. But because I also knew they were very, very manipulative person and they, you know, I had tried to talk with this person about multiple things, you know, trying to help them, you know, see certain things, but It just, I mean, it was like talking to a wall. Like this person was always suing people. I mean, they had a reputation so much so to their ex-spouses. When they'd call their ex-spouse and say something was wrong, they'd say nothing wrong with you. Because this person was that kind of person, pretending this. That's just how they were. So I talked to them multiple times about that. This is wrong. And I even said, I'm going to pray for you because you don't even see that it's wrong, right? Okay. Well, during this last conversation, they had heard me teaching here about the conscience And they called me and I could tell they wanted to confess to something, but they didn't. This is how they did it. I want you to listen to the manipulation here. 
So they called and was talking about something else. And I was like, okay, you know, like it didn't make sense what they, like it was so out of, out of context, what they were talking with me about. And so then finally out the blue in the middle of this conversation, they just, they blurt out, I lied. (laughs) Then they kept talking about something else as if they never said they lied. Well, you know, I knew they were trying to be manipulative. So I wasn't going to say to them, what did you lie about? I just let them go on with the conversation. But I was observing it the entire time. And I knew I, just like all the other people, I cannot be connected to this person. I cannot continue to associate with this person. So see, you can't, you know, do stuff like that and say, oh, that's, I, I confess this now and I've gotten this off. When the person has no idea what you were confessing or what you claim to, do you understand what I'm saying, guys? See, there are some people who are going to be manipulative to the very end, like what Wendy's doing. Did you see her TMZ interview? She's still lying. She's still saying she has a podcast. If you listen to that, Wendy doesn't have a podcast. Nobody has, no one's going to touch Wendy. She may be invited to somebody's podcast, but no company, no viable business is going to give her a podcast. Wendy is doing what's called fishing. When you want something and you just, you want people to hear that you're available and that you'd be willing to do it if they offer it to you. That's what she's doing. That's why when Harvey kept asking her questions about details, she kept saying, I don't know. Maybe I want to do this. Maybe I want to do this. Then she finally said, I don't even know what a podcast is. See, she wasn't even, it was very clear. Her mind wasn't even there. She shouldn't have even been doing, Wendy shouldn't be doing interviews. Her mind is not there the way it was. And, and, People around her aren't protecting her dignity. You know, there should be some states we just say, nobody's going to see me in this state. Or if we love someone, we say, you know what? I'm, I love you enough to protect you. And so we're not going to allow people to see you like this. First of all, she was doing the interview in her robe. You say, oh, but that's just Wendy. Do you know how odd that is for anyone to do a formal interview with their robe on? It was one thing when she was doing the interviews in her office, remember? After the show where she had taken off her show clothes and she would show us the dress because she'd tell us, oh, this is the designer. This is how much it cost. And then we'd watch her take off her makeup, right? That's a whole different situation than you having a formal interview where you're in your robe and then you lift up your foot and show people your horribly conditioned feet. That's not someone who is rational, who is in a rational state. Okay. And so, but look at her, she's still manipulating. She's still trying to tell, pretend that she's okay and that everything's fine when we can clearly see she's not fine, but yet she's still trying to manipulate, mislead people, make people think one thing when it's something else. So we can clearly see that Wendy has not turned around. She's not changed. She's not learned from what's happened to her own life, let alone the lives of others. So as I end now, I say all this to say, whatever happens with Donald after the end of these hearings, let's all remember justice will come. How and when, we don't know, but it will. We all know, honey child, that the view's going to be talking about it. (laughs) And even if Joy is in retirement... (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> when his justice comes, however he comes, right? They're going to patch her in from her house, child, or from Italy or wherever her and Steve are, and she's going to give us her view on it. Okay, guys, this was a drive time podcast. We touched on a lot of things here. Um, let's just keep observing. Let's keep enjoying the show, of course. And I will talk to you guys later. Bye.